Hi, I am so grateful that you are here with me today. I am Deanne Barrett, and I am known for helping moms to step out of the fog of guilt and really step into being the powerful leader that your teen need you to be right now. Here's what I know is absolutely true. This teenage stage that you're in right now is here for you to grow parts of yourself that you didn't even know you had. And I'll tell you a little bit more about how this has operated in my own life and how the incredible gift of the teenage stage has really allowed me to step into my own authentic power and express my soul's essence, and it can help you to get there too. So let's dive into this together. Now go ahead and grab a notebook so that you can write down some of the distinctions I'm gonna make for you today. And if you have a cup of something delicious next to you, that will make it even better. Now, I want you to really maximize this opportunity, and here's how. You can monotask. Just do one thing. So go ahead and turn your cell phone off, shut down your other web browsers, and just allow yourself to have this time to really commit to making a change in your life. And I know there's part of you that's saying, I don't know if I can change anything. And I'm here to tell you, you absolutely can. And I'm gonna show you how. So really, I want you to feel into your heart that today is the day that you can set down the heavy burden of guilt that you've been carrying around not liking your team. I want you to know that it's okay for you to feel that way. Because the guilt you've been feeling, or the overwhelm, the stress, the worry, the anxiety, all of those uncomfortable emotions are information for you that you need to make a change. But here's the thing you have gotten stuck in feeling that emotion and feeling like you need to stay there. And that's become like a fog. And so you are looking at your relationship with your teen, your understanding of yourself as a parent through this fog of guilt and stress and anxiety. And today we're going to lift that fog so you can see the incredible opportunities that you have to connect with your teen grow parts of yourself that you didn't even know you had so you can step into your authentic power as a heart-centered leader for your team. So if that sounds exciting to you, let's begin. Now I'm gonna share my screen with you here so that you can see some of these slides I have to share with you. Let's get in here. Okay, I really wanna share, oh there. Okay, here we go. So let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, how to stop feeling guilty and start liking your teen so you can be the powerful leader they need right now. So let me share a little bit of my story with you. Look at the far left picture, there I am with my crazy pink and purple hair. So this was me at, in the early days of my teaching career. I had a group of grade 10 students and they were nervous and excited and really wanting to do well in high school. And I told them, when you graduate from high school, I will dye my hair pink and purple to celebrate your achievement with you. And I did. And if you could see the whole picture, which I can't show you because they were my students and I don't have their permission, but if you could see the whole picture, you would see this group of beaming 17 and 18 year old high school graduates so excited about the opportunity that they had in their life. So I'm sharing this story with you because when I started teaching, I was a really shy person. And I stepped into a teaching job in a corner of my city that a lot of people didn't want to teach in because it had a bad reputation. I had 25 to 30 students, not all of whom re uh, respected women, and I was only about six years older than my students. So I had to really quickly learn how to stand in my authentic power and lead them. So I could no longer hide behind the story that I was a shy person. 
I had to grow parts of me that I didn't even know I had. And I had to master the skill of being able to, to say yes to my students as often as I could so that they would actually hear me when I had to say no. So I'm sharing this with you because over my journey of working with thousands of students, yes, I taught them a lot, but I have learned an incredible amount about myself as a leader and understanding my soul's essence, my authentic power. And that is the incredible opportunity that your team is giving you right now. So let's move to the middle. There are my honeys, my two babies. And when I had them, I had to recalculate again and grow skills that I didn't even know that I had. When I had my kids, my ability to feel the emotions of others around me and my intuition really intensified and it was overwhelming because I was not used to receiving that amount of information. And I was working in a classroom with 40 students at a time and it nearly shut me down because I was overwhelmed and stressed and I was not able to give anyone the best of me, not my students, not my kids when I got home, not my husband, I was a wreck. And so I really quickly, again, had to recalculate my life reestablish who I thought I was and grow parts of me that I didn't even know I had. And I actually also made the choice to step out of teaching in the classroom and step into this work because I knew my soul's calling was to help parents to really understand the opportunity of the teenage stage because so much of our culture is telling us that teens are difficult, this is just a stage. You just have to white knuckle your way through it and get through on the other side. And that is missing out on a huge opportunity to connect with your team, to really understand the gifts that they have, and to grow new parts of you that you didn't even know that you had. So here I am before you today, inviting you into this powerful work of spiritual growth through the period of raising teens. Okay, one more story about me, and then we'll really get into the content, but I wanna just share with you how the teenage stage operates and why it can be painful for everyone, but the opportunity that's there. Okay, here's me, awkward, overweight, my grade 10 year, wearing an oversized t-shirt that I didn't even like the moment we bought it, but it fit me, so I wore it. So here's something about me. I have always struggled with my weight. My mom, on the other hand, has always been trim and healthy, and she was a nurse, and so keeping us healthy was one of her priorities. She always gave us healthy food, made sure we got exercise, and yet I was always overweight. So I'm telling you this story because teens provide contrast. Something that we may not have ever struggled with in our life, our team will struggle with that thing because it's an opportunity for us to learn more about this human experience. Or often we have struggled with something and then our team will struggle with the very same thing. And we often will feel guilty because, ah, they've got that for me. I'm so worried they got that from me. And when we are saying that, we need to recognize that's our opportunity to work through this again, but this time as an adult, to support someone else and mentor them through it. So I really want you to hear that our teens give us contrast. And that's hard because as an adult, we've created a life for ourselves, so we don't have to struggle with those teenage issues. We don't have to struggle anymore with our body image. We don't have to struggle anymore with friendships. But then our team comes along and has struggles and it puts us right back in that place that we wish we had grown out of because we've been through it. But the more we can just see this as an opportunity for growth and learning, the more we will ease our way into it instead of resisting it. So I will tell you that the biggest compliment that a teen can give their parents is to say, my mom gets me. 
or my dad gets me. And what I mean by that is my mom fully sees me for who I am, the beautiful parts of me, the struggling parts of me. She understands me and sees me. And that is the gift that my mom gave to me. Even though I struggled with maintaining a healthy body weight, even though we would fight over clothes shopping because it was painful, she loved me through it and she got me. She understood the struggles I was going through and she was supporting me through them rather than creating more conflict by fighting with me over them. So I really want you to hold that in your heart and ask yourself the question, how can you really get your team and see where they're coming from? Because when you can step into that position and really come from a place of being curious about how their life feels, then you will be closer to that sweet spot of being this powerful leader. So it might be possible that your curiosity might be a part of you that you have an opportunity to grow right now with your team. Okay, grab your notebook. This is where we're going to talk about three limiting beliefs that you have right now as a parent that are actually leading to three big mistakes that you're making that contribute to three big problems that you have. So we're really going to walk through what are some of the trouble spots you're having right now so we can just pour some light in those and really see them for what they are. Here's number one, I'm not enough. I don't know enough, I'm not informed enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not healthy enough, I don't have a good enough background in parenting, I didn't come from a healthy background. All of those versions, or I'm screwing up my kids, or I've done it all wrong in the past, all of those are in the same theme of feeling like you are not enough. And I want you to know that everyone feels that way. But here's the thing. We all feel that way because we all have this inner critic in our minds that actually is really adaptive because it helps us check in with, what, how could I do better here? Or how could I shift out of that so I can do more here? So it's that inner critic that the purpose is to keep us safe so that we can get along in a community and we don't get too carried away. But that inner critic often gets too much airtime. The volume gets turned way up on that inner critic so that that's all we can hear. So I want you to hear in this that everyone feels that. Everyone feels like they're not enough. I coach parents all the time and I have moments in my own parenting where I think I am not a very good parent I don't know enough about this and I want you to know that in those moments you can just register say ah yeah I'm human after all what a relief because I'm feeling this and we can step into seeing that as information that we're at a point where we need to reach out for resources. We need to reach out for support in those moments. So really understand that that voice, I'm not enough, is normal. And it's a signal to you that it's time for you to reach out. And I'm guessing that's the signal that got you to be right here in this training with me. So we can say thank you to your inner critic for bringing you here today. Here's another limiting belief. But my teen has a troubled past. My teen has ADHD. My teen has a learning disability. But my teen has a father who enables all their behavior. All of these are stories that we tell about reasons why we might not be able to make a change. And I want you to know that no matter what situation your teen has in their life, you absolutely have the power to shift the way you relate to them, to grow new parts of yourself, to stand as a powerful leader for them. It is absolutely 
possible. Okay, here's another limiting belief. This is just the teenage stage, or this is just a normal part of being a teenager, and this stage will pass through. Now, here's why this is a limiting belief. When we just dismiss it as the teenage stage or expect it to be horrible, then we're actually missing out on the opportunities to change. So you may be right. The up and down turbulence of the adolescent stage is to be expected. But the way we respond to that turbulence with our teen may have lasting damaging effects. So I really want you to hear that. This stage may be normal, but the way we treat it can have lasting effects, much larger than just the stage. And if we keep telling the story that this is absolutely normal and that's as good as we can expect, we are actually limiting our ability to change things for the positive. So the reason why these are all called limiting beliefs is it because it keeps us small and weak and limits our ability to see the opportunity and the possibility that things could be otherwise. And that's really disempowering us. It's keeping us small and weak and limited. And this is the opportunity to step into something much more filled with opportunity and possibility for change which is what you are wanting. Because remember I talked about lifting out of that fog of guilt, overwhelm, stress, anxiety. So these are the things that have kept you in the fog. So just recognizing what has kept you there can help unhook you from it, even just a little bit, so you can start to see what's possible. So all of these limiting beliefs kind of keep us small keep us contained, and they can sometimes be the measuring stick that we beat ourselves with. So let's take a look at what those limiting beliefs are leading to, some of the mistakes that we're making. Micromanaging. Sometimes we call this helicopter parenting, snowplow parenting, overparenting, and some people are always make me laugh and they say, yeah, I'm overparenting, I'll admit it. And other people are like, I don't think I am, but I just need to, you know, check their grades every two days. And it's like, whoa, okay, that's, that's overparenting. So when we are micromanaging, this is one way we try and, we're just trying to keep our kids safe. We're trying to keep ourselves safe. We're trying to keep everything controlled. But when we are trying to over control things, that actually can be really confining when what we need to do with our teens is help them take over some of the responsibility. I sat down with my mom the other day and I said, Mom, what was your, what was your idea as you were parenting us, me and my brother? What were you really going for? What was your vision? And she said, I knew that my job was to teach you how to be independent. And so sometimes we just try so hard to keep everything safe and controlled and manageable that we lose sight of the fact that our job is to teach our kids to be independent, to do things for themselves. So here are two ways that you can know that you are micromanaging your teen. Number one, if you are checking your teen's grades more than once every two weeks, you are micromanaging them. Here's another way. If you are calling the mom of your teen's friend to sort out a social conflict between friends, you are micromanaging your teen. So those are two really clear indicators where you need to step back and give your teen some more space for them to sort out their own conflict, sort out their own academic life sort out their social relationships, okay? So micromanaging is just us trying to keep things safe and controlled, but it's actually handicapping our kids because we are not giving them the opportunities they need to learn how to manage those things on their own. 
Here's the other mistake that you might be making. Measuring your parenting by your team's behavior. So this is why so many people reach out to me. They say, I want my team to be more confident or I really need my team to be more respectful. And they feel guilty because they think, how have I let this go on so long? Why is this happening? And we put all of the blame on ourselves. Here's what's true. There may be things you could have, should have, would have done differently in the past, but you didn't because you made the best choices you could in the moment. And your child has free will to make their own decisions. And so your team's behavior is information for you about what you need to do right now. It is allowing you to have a pivot point, to recalculate, to shift things. And if you are continually measuring your parenting by their behavior and say, I don't measure up, then that's just adding the fog of guilt and overwhelm and stress and not allowing you to see the opportunities that are there. Here's another big mistake. Parenting from your mind, which is stressed, anxious, worried, overwhelmed, busy. We make so many decisions from the mind, the logistical decisions, scheduling, managing, checking their grades, checking the numbers. All of that is parenting from the mind. And that is necessary. But if we are only parenting from our minds, we are not parenting from our hearts, where there is compassion and kindness and love without condition, without worrying about how well our child is measuring up or performing, loving them regardless of any of that. And so that's a big mistake that we make is we put the lid on this heart and just parent from our minds and then we have lost one of the most valuable ways that we can connect with our team and actually get them and love them because that is your ultimate job as a parent is to help your child understand what love feels like and how it looks and how it operates and I know right now some of you are feeling like ah but that's scary I can't just like love them and accept everything they do because where are the boundaries and what's going to keep them safe and how are they going to keep motivated and that's the mind again getting scared and so what I really want you to hear is we need to come from both places and right now we have just been coming from the mind so we need to learn how to also come from the heart and connect those two so that we can find that beautiful, empowered space of loving our teens and helping them learn to be independent and creating a healthy, safe environment for them to do that in. So all of these big mistakes lead us to really squash our teen. They feel like a squished banana under our shoe. And no one likes to feel that way, especially not teens who are really trying to live in the adult world. So let me just share with you this beautiful metaphor from psychologist Lisa Damore. She says, being an adolescent is like swimming in the deep end of the pool. They are swimming away. They are putting all of their energy into this. They're trying to manage the social relationships of the kids at school, all their academic work, trying to feel all the feelings that are getting thrown at them. And it can be a lot of work. And every once in a while, they need to just catch their breath. And so they swim to the edge of the pool. And that's where we are. That's where their parents are, on the edge of the pool. And if when they get there, they're feeling attacked and you're not enough and why aren't you doing this? 
then it is not a place of rest for them. And so what they need when they come to the side of the pool is some coaching and encouragement and inspiration. I can see how hard you're working. Keep going. Try and take bigger strokes so that you can last longer out there. I love you. Keep going so that they can actually have a safe emotional place to catch their breath so they can go back into the deep end again. So I'm sharing that image with you as an alternative to this squashed banana under the shoe which we sometimes fall into when we're trying to parent from our stressed mind, micromanage, and tell the story about how they're not enough. So here are three big problems you may have. So if you're in frequent conflict with your teen, you keep having these explosive blow-ups with them, or maybe you're letting your teen have everything they want, so there's not a lot of conflict, but you are feeling like a horrible parent, and you can see that that is not serving your teen very well. You're struggling to find a happy middle ground between allowing your teen to have some freedom and setting some healthy boundaries. So this might be when you're saying, oh my gosh, I have let things go too far. I've been too permissive, and now I have to sh get them to shape up and give them all these boundaries, and now they're fighting against it. And maybe you, you've tried that before, and you say, I can't set boundaries for them because they don't respect them, because you've tried and didn't hold up the boundary, and there's all of this awkwardness, and your team keeps rebelling because they don't know if they can trust the boundaries that you've set. Or maybe you've fallen into trying to be the cool mom who lets them have a few drinks in the basement when they're in junior high, and now you realize, oh my gosh, that did not serve me well because it's come into this big problem. So you may have been too permissive to make up for times when you were too restrictive, or because you felt bad about all these big blow-ups that are happening. Is that sounding familiar to you? Here's a third big problem. You don't have a vision of how you want to show up as a leader for your team. So when we are measuring our behavior, our judging ourselves as a parent by our team's behavior, we are going to fail because it doesn't matter how firm the boundaries, how loving we are, our teens still get to choose the way they're going to respond in that. So if we are judging our parenting based on all of our teens' behavior, then we are stuck in this trap. Here's the solution. It's creating a vision of how you want to show up for your team. What qualities do you need to grow in yourself so that you can be the leader that your team needs? This is where we're going. So there's the problems. There they are. It's like gum under the shoe. It's turned into a big, sticky mess, and you're not sure how to get out of it. So let's talk a little bit about solutions. What would your life look like if you could let go of the worry, let go of the anxiety, let go of the guilt? What if that was a fog that could lift? so that you could see the opportunities that you have to connect with your team, to like them, to even love them, and to really feel capable and confident as their parent, and to know that you're doing everything you can to be a powerful leader for them, and to stop feeling like you are sacrificing, and really open up to Standing in your power, shining your light on your team, 
being your best self and really expressing your soul's essence. What if you could do that? So I really want you to think back to the story that I shared with you earlier about how I was a shy person. You hear that? My limiting belief, I'm a shy person. But I knew that I was called to work with teens. So I had to get over myself. I had to get over the story that I was shy and learn to be something different and really show up and step into my power as a leader. And that is possible for you. That's exactly what I teach my clients to do. It's to really step up to the plate, lean in to connecting with your team because they're not behaving this way because you're a horrible parent. Their behavior is information for you so that you understand that you have an area where you can grow. And chances are you've kept the lid on a lot of parts of yourself because you haven't felt like it's really safe to be that. And your teen is kind of poking at those parts, poking at those parts that have not been healed, that have not been fully expressed. And this is an opportunity to shed some love and light on all of that so that you can really grow parts of you that you didn't even know you had and be a powerful leader for your team right now and really step into this next chapter of your life being completely, authentically you. Not the you that's stressed out, overwhelmed, anxious, but the you that is empowered, the you that is really clear about where you stand, the you that embodies love for your team and for yourself. Because soon you're going to be having your child leave your home forever, and then you will not be the same person that you have been for the past number of years. For over a decade, almost two decades, you've been a mom in a certain way. And when your child leaves your, leaves your house, I don't want you to look around and say, who am I now? I want you to know who you are and be excited about the next chapter in your life. So just take a moment to open your heart to what is possible for you. Because here's what's true. Whatever conflict, struggle, discomfort you're having right now as a parent, I know you're thinking that it's about fixing a problem with your team. And I want you to really hear that the problem you're having is actually an opportunity to open up more of you. So you can grow parts of you you didn't even know you had. Step into your authentic power. Let me give you a few examples. I was talking to a mom the other day who said, you know, I really wanted to start my own business as a photographer, but I haven't because I'm really afraid of pricing and I don't know how to do that part of it. And I'm really scared about the whole pricing thing. And the concern she had about her son was that he had lost his spark. So I really want you to hear how the concern she had was that her son had really lost his spark and he was unmotivated, and that's directly connected to her letting go of her dream of a photography business because she was scared about it. Those two things were so connected. I also talked to a mom the other day who was in such sadness and hurt because her son 
was bullying another kid at school. And the mom herself had been bullied. And so she was so sad that her son would be doing this behavior that she had worked so hard to not have happen in her house. She had tried to teach him empathy and compassion. And she realized during our call together, she had taught him those things. But what he really was trying to learn now was how to hold his power. So I really want you to hear how the trouble that we see with our teens is actually for us to heal parts of our lives that we hadn't healed yet or to have a second chance at addressing that were not fully addressed when we were teens or to help us learn more about who we are because we're in whole new territory with our teens. So these conflicts are here for us to grow. I really want you to hear that and see how much you can expand who you are and step further into your power by walking through these conflicts with strength and with heart because that's what courage means. And so I want you to hear that it's been hard to have courage because you've been alone in this. And we don't talk this way with our friends. And our culture is telling us that you just need to fix this problem with your teen. But I'm here to tell you that these conflicts and struggles are here for you for you to learn and grow and become more powerful in your own life. And when you are more powerful in your own life, your team's behavior shifts because they have strong leadership. Because what every team wants is to know they can trust the adults in their life, that they trust that the adults will keep them safe, and stand strong in their boundaries and that they will be loved no matter what they do so that your team can step into their full power. So here's the invitation I have for you today. I'm offering you a free 30 minute call with me. And the question I'm going to ask you is, how do you want to show up? as a leader for your team? Because that's the question that you haven't asked yourself before. Because you've been looking at your team's behavior and wanting to fix it. And that will happen when you have a solid foundation, a solid vision of how you need to show up for your team right now. So you can start measuring your Self as a parent based on your vision, not based on what your teen is doing. So you can ask yourself at the end of every day, if you know you need to step into more courage, you can ask yourself, how have I been courageous today? If you know you need to set firmer boundaries, you can ask yourself, have I been consistent today? So this is your opportunity to really get a clear vision for how you need to show up for your team. Get a clear vision of that part of you that needs to grow so you can be a powerful leader for your team. So you can book your call right now. So go to bit.ly forward slash resilience coach. It's bit.ly forward slash r-e-s-i-l-i-e-n-c-e C-O-A-C-H, bit.ly forward slash resilience coach. That'll take you to my calendar. You can book yourself for a complimentary 30 minute call. It's called your roadmap to resilience because these will be the next steps for you to shift into being that powerful leader that your team right, needs right now. 
So remember when I talked about parenting from the heart and the mind together. This is your opportunity today. It's to transform the way you are parenting your team because that will transform your life. God, the universe, whatever word you use to describe that loving organizing force in our world has brought you and your team together for a purpose so that you can both grow. So if you've been thinking you're here to teach your child all that you know, I want you to know that you've only been seeing half of the picture. Your team is here to teach you through your experiences with them more about life, more about love, more about your soul's essence than you ever imagined was possible. And so this is a moment of transformation. This is your opportunity. The conflict, the contrast, the struggle is for you to grow. But you don't need to do it by yourself. I'm here to take you through this step by step. I will hold your hand and help you to see what just had been clouded over before. So this is your opportunity for transformation. You can absolutely do that. You don't need to do it alone. I am here to help you. So this is your opportunity. You have nothing to lose. It's 30 minutes of your time. Go to bit.ly forward slash resilience coach. And I will help you understand the next steps for letting go of the guilt, overwhelm, stress, anxiety, and creating a powerful vision for how you want to show up for your team. We're at the end. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for taking your precious time to be here with me today. Thank you for opening your heart to what's possible for you. Okay, until next time, be well. Be well.